Who the fuck is Lil Xan? Sunny V2 makes these really great videos on a bunch of different topics that I always find interesting. Uh, Lil Xan is a ra was a rapper, I guess. I don't know if he does it anymore. But Lil Xan's biggest claim to fame was he was a guy who almost died from overdosing on Flaming Hot Cheetos. I remember he got sent to the emergency room because of eating too many Flaming Hot Cheetos. And that changed the way I approach snacks forever. So we have quite a few here that I've stockpiled. Because I think all of these are pretty interesting. I don't know Jayus though. But I was talking to Sonny uh, like a month or so ago. And he has been blowing up. And this Jayus one went wild. So I'm assuming Jayus must be a pretty big creator that did some fucked up shit. So I figured this would be fun to learn about. A little internet drama. I'm going to go say goodnight to Tiana real quick. I'll be right back. Be right back. Alright, let's ride. In my past, I said disgusting things to people, and I am so ashamed of myself for using racist rhetoric, and I am so sorry to everyone, but especially to those in the black community, because only you guys can forgive me for this. One of the worst I've ever seen. She definitely took notes from the other crappy Oh, ones. that was the apology was video? YouTube comment described only Jayus's public nice. apology following just one of her numerous different TikTok controversies. This is what makes only Jayus's story unique. Despite having incredibly uncontroversial content, if you're at a house party and you got a drink in your hand, don't hold it up here by your chest. Try to hold it more down towards your hip. This will make you seem more open and confident and people will be more willing to come up and talk to you. She's found Not true. You could just be a giant fucking loser and you could put that beer bottle up your butthole. It's not going to help. So bad advice. Stop giving people false hope. You might just suck. And you have to accept that herself in a big scandal on the political TikTok battlefield every couple of months for the last three years. At this point, people of color should not be following only JS. Why is only JS more prone to getting involved the in these types of controversies? You know, is it something to do with how she responds to those critical of her? I barely text my family back and I just had to move apartments because my address got leaked and you're gonna throw a fit? Because I didn't make you my priority? After a petition to ban only JS from TikTok garnered over 400,000 oh. signatures, Whoa. it'd be safe to say that she's a contender for the platform's most hated creator. Did the, did the petition work? Petitions have always, like, historically been incredibly effective. So I'm assuming that... Let's see, let's see how we're looking. She's gone up 4 million 200... Or, nope, exactly 4 million followers. Bro, wait, if these petitions are so... Not bad! Looking good. Ada. And while such a title seems unfair without any further information or knowledge, as we go through explaining how this hatred came to be, the reason for this title will become blatantly obvious. And it all began with a tweet made by only Jayus on the 9th of April 2020, just 12 months after she began posting videos to the website. I constantly feel like nobody actually likes me. So when I see thousands of hate comments saying, yeah, I never liked only Jayus, she's so annoying. Jayus seems like a horrible person. That pushed me to the edge. Uh -oh. The harsh and possibly the dark even side. backwards reality of life is that those who acknowledge and complain about hate only end up receiving You won't like hate. me when I'm In the beginning, I'm only JS likely received a pretty standard on amount Twitter. of negative feedback, owing to maybe a slightly annoying delivery, as she mentioned in her tweet. The problem that only JS had was that she really struggled to ignore criticism and always seemed to give way too much attention to any situation in which there was some kind of negative sentiment against her name. It's got to be a running theme throughout this whole video, but it started with her simple inability to ignore basic negative comments, such as, yeah, I never liked only JS, which is a pretty tame comment her <laughs> that is pretty tame yeah. as someone who would crack if you simply applied enough pressure three months later this reputation as a creator who would respond to negative criticism will if continue after Neon only jace discovered soy. that another creator by the name of the jonathan moss had been copying some of her videos word for word did you know that your birth month actually has a huge effect on who you are as a person and the things that could possibly happen to you yo did you know that your birth month actually has a huge effect on you and the things that can happen to you in your life people born in march are way more more likely to have asthma and i can actually speak to this one because my little sister the only one born in march has asthma what the fuck are you talking about what is that real like these are things she actually believes in or is this like some kind of tiktok meme i don't understand who the fuck actually believes that why do people just like want to disregard basic reasoning jesus christ astrology is one thing like it's harmless like you can believe in astrology it doesn't really matter or whatever like, zodiacs dictate who you fall in love with, what or whatever, your lottery numbers, it doesn't matter, it's harmless. But do people parade it around as, like, actual real things? Like, your birth month changes you? Or has an effect on your life? 
There's no way people actually like believe in that shit. God damn, that's crazy. <laughs> what the fuck? Damn. Three. In March are actually more likely to have asthma. And I can speak to that because my cousin, the only person born in March, has asthma. Only Jazz would respond to the copied videos in a tweet reading, TikTok creators should be called out when they copy other TikTok creators' videos word for word, alongside a video calling out the Jonathan Moss directly. Jonathan responded by stating that he'd simply found the information on Google. And as a result, <laughs> Only Jazz was berated and mocked by her audience, with them stating that she Aww. was in the wrong for copying the information from Google. This information is from a website. Why are you copying a copier? Copied from Google then complains when others do the same. Which Business Insider article is this from? There was clearly a bit of an injustice being done here. To state that her information was invalid because it was found on Google has got to be one of the dumbest arguments ever made. What did they expect her to do? Find some old 1850s foundational manuscript covered in dust at the National Library and take her it. facts from there? Jonathan Moss had clearly copied her videos word for word after Only JS had posted them originally, meaning there was no doubt about who copied who. Is However, Only JS June? was still painted as being in the wrong for one simple reason. They knew they could get a reaction out of her if they simply applied enough pressure, which they eventually would. After receiving hundreds of negative comments on her response, Only Jazz would take to Reddit stating, he said that he found it on Google, which I mean he did, but only after watching my video. I'm now getting a huge amount of hate, people saying I'm lying. I copied Google too, I'm problematic, I should be cancelled, etc. I have a hard time dealing with the negativity. I still what? don't know what to do. What I don't think this? I've done anything wrong. Maybe you do, but honestly, I don't see it. What are they talking about? It's not even like real anything. It's fucking nonsense. <laughs> what is... You got this information from a, a Google source. Oh my God. Holy shit. Yeah, it's like a full-blown Reddit post. Nice. Man, TikTok is just like its own little ecosystem of degeneracy. A wild. On her response, only Jazz would take to Reddit stating, he said that he found it on Google, which I mean he did, but only after watching my video. I'm now getting a huge amount of hate, people dealing with the negativity. I still don't know what to do. I don't think I've done anything wrong. Maybe you do, but honestly, I don't see it. And to reiterate the point from earlier, complaining about hate doesn't make it go away, but rather amplifies it as the audience will look for increasingly petty things to berate you for. With this in mind, it's barely surprising to find out that approximately six months later, an old message will be dug up in which only JS had said the N-word, taking center stage as a colossal-sized controversy. Ooh, I love you, no matter your sex. What the fuck was that? What is... Oh, yuck. Uh-oh. All about sucking up to Luna. Is that like astrology or something? Ooh, the abortion didn't work. Oh boy, she's she's really going full blown Xbox Live here, even dropping the racism. Oh my, this now this is outrageous. On TikTok, oh come on now, good. This was a this was a heated gamer message. Shit got crazy. She went fucking insano style. I wonder what the controversy was. Like, what what sparked this message? Blaine how I'm sucking up to Luna. Maybe like fanfic or something. Maybe I don't know. I love you no matter your sex, your gender, your sexuality, your faith, or your race. I guess that didn't age well, cause this you at the bottom calling someone the hard er a word used to oppress black people. That's why I don't trust people with savior complexes, bro. I feel There's like it's always a second agenda Brent behind Pete. what you do. If you say it's two to three years old, you were 20 years old when you said it. The other day, Addison was canceled for old BLM tweets from 2016. Let's see if everyone keeps the same energy. You're a role model to 10 million people, bro. I hope things get better, and I hope you educate. How did she respond, I wonder? There were a couple of comments in support of Only JS. However, as a whole, and understandably, the response was mostly negative. All these white people saying, it happened four years ago. Literally, it doesn't matter. She did it and needs to take responsibility. The hard ER, she's done. And at Only JS, you got caught in 4K. The best way that JS could have responded to this expose would have either been no response at all, or a short call. Oh call my God, she's in a Rolls Royce. Post. <laughs> Is this where she did her apology video? This is a Rolls Royce, right? They're the only ones that do this starlight thing, right? So she was born rich? That's nuts. It's not a Royce? I thought they had a patent on this. We watched the whole video on the dog shit Rolls Royce does. I thought they had the literal patent on being able to do this in the interior of a car. Oh, it's a filter. Now I sound like an idiot. It's not a filter. It's a custom... It's a custom Mercedes... It's a custom Mercedes top. Okay, I see. All right, maybe I'm misremembering the video, but I remember Rolls Royce made a huge deal about their ability to put stars in the the roof of the interior, and them being the only ones allowed to do it. They had a, if I remember correctly, they have a full time star guy 
His whole job is putting stars that light up in the roof of Rolls Royces. I'm pr I'm pretty sure they must have some kind of patent or like a stranglehold on the technology. They have one designated Grandmaster Star Lord for their vehicles. Or video. Alternatively, she could have thrown a real curveball and simply said, "I'm not sorry," which would have actually You're been right, but she did this it's DIY. It's times harder oh. than simply getting in front okay. of the camera and blurting out some pre-written stupid script with the goal of suppressing the criticism in the short term. However, with a track record like Only Jayus, obviously she did none of these, and rather posted a long, emotionally charged, scripted, generic social media apology, which felt as though it was designed to trick the audience into coming away with a specific feeling, as is usually the case with these types of public apologies. And there is no excuse. And there are no justifications for what I said. Mm -hmm. And you guys deserve better. And when I first saw the screenshots, I didn't even think that they were real because I forgot how hateful and how angry of a person I used to be. Another YouTuber slash TikToker by the name of Papa Gut, who spoke to Jayus on the phone prior to the apology, thought that the intentions were sincere and that the apology was simply delivered poorly. I actually had a conversation, a private phone call conversation with Jayus about this situation. She seemed pretty sincere about how sorry she was. Uh, again, well, like I, I said, imagine I she, she would be. Mystic. You literally hit us with a Playboy Cardi album. All that suspense, just for it to be trash. The worst insult <laughs> you could tell somebody was liking black people. Wow. With the scandal being shared across every Wait, platform imaginable. Was that in her apology video? All right, let me just look at the apology video. Hold on, let's get caught up to speed here. All right, I don't like, I don't like not knowing exactly in everything past, that's happened here. Well, no, I'm assuming it was longer. She she had two, and Sunny was just showing clips. I'm assuming it's this one. In my past, I said disgusting things to people. I am so ashamed of myself for using racist rhetoric and derogatory language to hurt others. Oh, it was in the message because text. I oh, I thought it was in the video. And I understood the power behind it. Gotcha, I sorry. It anyway, because it was the meanest thing that I could think of. And I'm so sorry to everyone, but especially to those in the black community, because only you guys can forgive me for this. And there is no excuse. And there are no justifications for what I said. And you guys deserve better. And when I first saw the screenshots, I didn't even think that they were real because I forgot how <laughs> hateful and how angry of a person I used to be. And Why aren't you crying? So and where's your dog? Knowing that I said those things. I know that my words hurt people. And I know that my words have consequences. Well, not really. The consequences were 4 million new followers, actually. But I am so deeply Seem to walk away pretty strong. For all the pain that I've caused. Wow. As well as a Netflix podcast she'd been hosting by the name of Know It All it at Tinder. This is what your walking ad is saying. She has a Netflix podcast. That. Everyone needs to tag at Netflix. Netflix has cut ties with Jayus. Big dubs. Only Jayus was clearly feeling the pressure and understandably wanted to make things right with her audience. So she'd end the apology by stating that she wanted to share my platform with some amazing black creators who are going to tell their story to try and educate others on the trauma that happens when we use this kind of language. Which would eventually result in her and another African-American content creator by the name of Aunt Karen agreeing to collaborate on Only Jayus's channel. In addition to this, two weeks after the apology, Only Jayus would go to the effort of posting a video talking about how she had read a book on anti-racism. The the first book that I decided to pick up was How to Be Anti-Racist by Dr. <gasps> Ibram Kendi. What? And this will push readers that think that they're not racist into being something better. To her credit, she did acknowledge that it was a grift in the title statement. What? I know it might come off as performative talking about this at the end of Black right, History. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hit you with the cold water. If you need to buy a book on how not to be racist, you've already failed. I think you're already too far gone. What the fuck? Hey guys, I just picked up this book on why murder isn't awesome, and it was a real eye-opener for me. Like, it, it made some points that I never even really stopped to consider, and I think if any of you are considering murder, you might want to check out this book. Like, it really might steer you in the other direction. Month, but I'm trying to just educate myself and use my platform for good. However, her audience wasn't buying any of the lies. I bet after this video, she just tossed the book like it's nothing. That seems like an amazing book for you, but I think you missed some pages. Maybe you missed a few chapters? Read it again. But hey, at least she was still in the, in the process of sharing her platform with some other black content creators as she promised, right? Pork. Well, no. So this message is for you only, Jay, after your whole N-word debacle. Said you want to collaborate with me. We email and suddenly you've dropped off the face of the earth. Are black people just tokens for you to use when you're ready to play? If you were really truly sorry about what you said, 
you would not have lied and said you were going to do something you clearly aren't trying to do. The TikTok essentially outlined that after agreeing to collaborate, only JS would ghost this creator by the name of Aunt Jesus Karen Christ. once everyone had forgotten about the drama. Now to only JS's credit, Aunt Karen's callout was even more pathetic than JS's original apology. Because setting up a collaboration with another creator can be incredibly difficult. There's always problems relating to difference in content style, difference in schedule, difference in time zones, the problem of coming up with a Well then don't say you're gonna do it. Both audiences, what part of the script do I disagree with that statement. Person, et cetera, et cetera. I still think Yet JS Aunt is Karen's the worst one here. Aunt Karen's callout was, because only JS ghosted me, she's therefore a racist. Why not just be racist? Just say you're racist. Now maybe there was some racism involved in the decision. Who knows? But it's still a lazy, low-hanging fruit argument designed to create drama out of the highly likely reality, being that collaborations are just incredibly difficult to set up successfully. In addition to this, a feature on only JS's page with over 10 million followers is going to cost a brand probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. And Stupid despite only blue. JS offering one of these spots to Aunt Karen for free, Aunt Karen still seemed to narcissistically think that she was the one providing only JS with the opportunity. I really gave you an opportunity. So I am sorry for basically ghosting you. I didn't mean to do that. I just have a very chaotic schedule and ADHD on top of that. So I genuinely just forgot and it wasn't me trying to ignore you. Oh. Um, you could have just hit me up again, but instead you decided to go public and try to add public pressure onto me and that's not cool. So I don't want to collaborate. Which will once again receive a response from Aunt Karen explaining that she had emailed only JS multiple times with no reply. You're going to put it on me? In your voicemail you said I should have emailed you again. Viral nation? I emailed you. How many times that sounds like do a you scam. expect me to message you waiting on you to continuously ghost me? Now, only JS probably could have left it at that. And the drama would have been over within four Maybe weeks. Blue However, fire as Papa cookie. Gut said most accurately, for whatever reason, JS doesn't know how to just stop. Like when somebody criticizes JS, JS responds. And that's the worst thing. And in classic only JS fashion, she'd post another emotionally charged response to the drama. Oh. Today's episode of What Are People Mad At Me For Now? Not checking my emails in a timely manner. I wish I was joking. I forgot to respond to an email from this creator that wanted to collab with me. And you know, instead of just like hitting me up again, they made seven videos about it. Can you please leave me the f alone? I have a diet This is like a Chris Farley sketch. That makes me forget things. I couldn't check my email because I was living in a van down by the river. For days. I we mentioned earlier that the more attention only JS gave to each of these scandals, the more she'd be held accountable for increasingly petty incidents. Well, after this explosive response, the things that her audience would call her out on were taken to the absolute extreme. For example, she would post this video. You can get your letters delivered for free without any postage if you just put where you want it to go on the return address instead of where it's actually supposed to be. <laughs> Which would get the post office activists involved with comments <laughs> such as, yes, please encourage people to do activities that cause the already failing post office to lose more money. Or when she posts this what video saying nothing more than Life what she did. So I got my college degrees in math and computer science, which means that I was never really good at writing. To receive comments such as, I thought you would have majored in saying slower sciences. However, it eventually got to the point where only JS couldn't even make jokes anymore without being cancelled. Seriously. On the 23rd of May 2021, only JS would post the following video. If a service dog ever approaches you but they're alone, that means that their owner is in trouble and they probably can't move, so you should follow him you'll get a free wallet. It was clearly a light-hearted joke, summed up in comments such as, she probably said the wallet thing to lighten the mood of something bad. Obviously, she wouldn't take a wallet and probably knew that most James. people would. Bro, do people get this oh, as a I joke? Y'all are so James. sensitive. However, the rest of her audience simply saw yet another opportunity to put only JS through another period of hardship. Can't believe this is still up. It's obvious that it's a joke, but some people may still do it. <clears> it could start a trend. What you post on the internet reaches so many people, and some of those people What are you talking about? How often is a service dog going to be approaching people and lead them to someone who is injured? That surely can't be such a frequent occurrence that it could start a trend on TikTok. What in the fuck is going on over there? Like, it's not a good joke or anything. Like, it's just a pretty generic one. It's like something that your grandpa would send you in like an old email chain. But like, what? why are they pretending like it's somehow like a terrible thing? It's like, oh my god, someone might actually do this. I haven't even- I see a service dog like once every six months, maybe. 
be inconsiderate or apathetic towards others and do something wrong as a joke that highly affects another person. Take some YouTube and TikTok prank channels for example. When is it going to be enough to Thank say you, only JS is not a good creator, you. should not be followed and should not be listened to? My child, they are a service dog user. This is not a kind of joke you want to be putting out there. It's not funny to anybody who uses a service dog. With all this in mind, the petition with over 400,000 signatures to have only JS banned is barely a surprise. She dug herself into a hole by displaying an inability to switch off from the audience after being involved in scandal after scandal after scandal. Sometimes criticism from the audience is genuine and can be spotted easily because it's worded in a constructive way. But a lot of the time, without them even realizing it, people write mean or critical things just to see if you're the type of person to crack, respond, or apologize, as has been the case throughout only JS's entire TikTok career. She's been tested over and over and over, yet has been unable to switch off and let things go whenever she's been put under pressure. As an end result, there's not only a Seems lot like of respect, she's only done two apology videos. I thought it was going to be a lot more. That was interesting. I never heard of any of that. Uh, well, let's see how she... So she's gone up 4 million subscribers since this video. So she's doing pretty well on that front. Or, er, followers. So she's doing well there. Yeah, she's doing just fine on TikTok. I know she's big on YouTube too, so let's see how that's going. Yeah. Seems like everything's on the up and up. Think about it. I'll check this out real quick. I'm not gonna watch the whole thing. Unless it's oh, fucking amazing. So is this an MMO or what is it? I don't really know too much about the project. I know it's been in development for like 20 years. Welcome to Hogwarts Legacy. Single player RPG. You're a new student at the famed school of witchcraft and wizardry with a unique ability to manipulate powerful ancient magic Whoa. hidden in the wizarding world. You'll need to uncover what's behind the return of this forgotten magic and who is seeking to harness it to destroy wizardkind. As you may be the one that decides the fate of the entire hey, wizarding Labyrinth, world. Swift in the Gryffindor. This is Hufflepuff, so adorable. Ravenclaw or Slytherin. After you settle into your dormitory, you will meet up with your housemates in the Comets Defense Against the Dark Arts, Herbology, and So it's like an actual school a simulator. Fuck, it sounds oh, miserable. Hello. I don't miss Class. school at all. Crucial year in oh, your it's like bully. Oh. on the art of chart work. But I am confident I love you bully. will take hold with a passion and rigor requisite of such a challenge. Now you do parcel tongue. Fuck him up. You may begin. Trash. Wow, this guy's getting wrecked. What the fuck? Did you just go AFK? Potions is one of the most challenging and hazardous subjects taught at this school. Here, you'll meet your professors and learn to cast spells, grow magical plants, brew potions, and more. In between classes, you'll be able to explore the castle famous for its secrets. So far, this doesn't really look like a game I'd really like. You'll dungeons and secret passageways. I'm not like the biggest Harry Potter fan. I mean, I think it's kind of... Like the movies are kind of as well fun, as challenging puzzles that will require magical him. skill and a clever mind to solve. This feels like a game they'd have in like the waiting line at Universal Studios it's Harry the Potter late 1800s, World. So while the common rooms and classes may be familiar, most of your professors will not be. However, you may recognize a few faces. Nearly a headless Join Nick. Join the headless hunter, be right there with them. Suffering is sure to win them over. Uh, don't forget why I'm here, sir. Sparrow. Opportunity. This 
is such a long trailer. Yeah, it's like 14 minutes. I'm, I'm not gonna watch the whole thing. Like I said, Harry Enemies Potter movies are fun, but it's not like I'm a Harry Potter abilities, fanatic. Including I'll play it. I'll play every new game. Snakes. Counter attack. Well, that guy's just straight up dead. Charms, allowing you to follow up with extended spell combinations. Slam with Descendo. Nice. Roast with Incendio. Devastate your enemies using various finishes. You can even use Jesus. the mysterious, powerful <laughs> magic your professors do not understand to obliterate Man, fuck your that goblin foes. in particular, I guess. Mixing and matching dozens of spells will let you define your combat style. I mean, it looks fine. I'm gonna give it a try when it comes out. But again, I'm not like a mess. Maybe I won't appreciate the classroom simulator aspect. Gameplay looks pretty fun. <clears throat> yeah, we won't, we'll watch these two in a minute. There was one more I wanted to see and I forgot. Oh yeah, the Kenobi trailer. I don't think I've seen the trailer. I just saw a lot of people talking about it and sharing clips. More sand, let's go. It really does feel the like they just have done. one set and it really gets a workout. Stay hidden. I used to be such a huge Ewan McGregor fan until I read a fucking Reddit post about his, like, uh, traveling on motorcycle series. Where, in, like, the recent episode, his wife really wasn't a part of it because he left his wife for a younger woman. Just abandoned his whole family for new pussy. Made me so sad because I loved Ewan. The Jedi code is like an itch. He cannot help it. Well, at least there's more than sand. We'll take that. What were those guys called? They were in Fallen Order, right? What, that he left his wife and family for a younger woman? That he cheated on his wife with? That's how is that me being an edge lord? What are you talking about? That's just what happened. What do you mean? Also, that trailer is kind of nice. Look it up yourself, man. I'm not just being an edge lord. Uh, what was his motorcycle series called? He, you didn't say cheated first time. Okay, uh, maybe I'm misremembering, but either way, he left his wife for another woman because she was younger and hotter. They met on a movie set. What the fuck was that motorcycle series called? He's dating the uh, the woman from Birds of Prey. Yeah, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Ramona Flowers. So he left his family for her. I remember that. But he made... I don't remember the whole story now since it's been about a year. But he had this motorcycle series where he'd travel like some remote areas on motorcycle. And it was like really profound stuff. And then they brought it back recently. And I can't remember if his wife wasn't there or only there in limited capacity. So I read why she wasn't on Reddit. And it was because he left his whole family for her. Just just to, like, be with her. Is that what it was called? Long Way Around? That might have been it. I'm pretty sure she also cheated. Yeah, I don't remember the whole story now. I just remember that and I was like, damn, that sucks. It was a really cool series. So I didn't watch the last one. Your sources read it? I mean, what do you, what do you mean? It's not like it's a secret. He left his wife and went right to her. It's not like it's just some kind of well kept only talked about in hush whispers thing oh my god another motorhome we toured the most futuristic mo there must be some crazy motorhome collectors out there or enthusiasts out there all right last motorhome though i'm only doing two what's up everybody it's now this model starts around 1 million euros and a particular oh it's cheap right compared to the last the one upgrades goes for 1 million 70 thousand euros they're giving it away around 1 million two hundred fifty thousand dollars where am i gonna put and my supercar it at least looks more futuristic looks like a truck yeah so we're gonna start our tour on the exterior walk around the entire vehicle like the then on. we're gonna take you guys inside first thing i want to mention this motorhome is built on a mercedes actress chassis you have a 12.8 8 liter engine v12 i don't care about any of that 530 horsepower and they can get zero out, horsepower i don't care man i just want to see if it can gallon, even do some cool shit weighs. i love the contemporary lines it's just the motorhome looks so modern and elegant and we're used to seeing it actually looks really so minimal cool, let's say old school but this is not it's like half the textures haven't loaded it's so elevated from the ground look at 
the passenger side here. And below here, Mikey, we have your hydraulic pumps. And mm -hmm. right next to that is your split air conditioning unit for the entire motorhome. Super cool. Very and cool right indeed. In the yes. center, we have this lit up staircase that leads you to the inside. Push of a button, you can actually close the staircase. The motorhome, we have four solar panels. <gasps> oh my God. 320 it's watts. green. So in total, you get 1,320 watts. And right here, Mikey, you have 200 amp each, in total 800 amp. Now, Mikey, Most of the people that are able to afford this cool are old hacks. How are they going to climb that steep staircase? Here, there's a nice cutout <laughs> yeah, I don't for your know, keypad. Man. And I cannot show you guys Look how code, cool that is. So futuristic. And then it oh, enters into self-destruct mode. Like that. That's sleek. It is super sleek, right? There you go. Now, Mikey, two more details here. Number one. The, it really sticks out far. Exactly. And another cool detail. I know too much about this RV now. When the wind gets up to 39 kilometers an hour, it automatically closes up since it doesn't have any supporting legs. Wow. Super <laughs> unique, right? Yeah. Now, speaking of unique, this is amazing. It's so weak that this it's built in with a coward a system. Where you can park your we can't handle any faster winds than this. We're incredible. going back in. It's also branded with the same color theme like the rest of the motorhome. And uh, it's amazing the fact that you can actually bring your own personal car wherever you travel. That's always been like my biggest problem with, uh, with RVs in Coom. general, because like usually you're out in like national parks or something, and it's like sometimes you want to drive on a dirt road, but you can't take these big cars. Or go to grocery shopping. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And in this case, this motorhome comes with this smart car here as well, and they have a tow hook here, and... Oh, I was going to say, yeah, like how do you get out? Because once you park like it in that, there, you'd be you trapped via your tomb. And close this hydraulic door. Okay, so they have a tow hook. Amazing, right? They now, thought of Mikey, everything. Let's wrap around and continue. And if we follow this way, Mikey, can it fly? Extra storage compartments. I and wish. down below is your 408 kilowatt generator. Every time you need the generator, it turns on automatically. So you don't have to shift the button or turn the switch on. It's just automatically wired that way. Pretty cool. It's an American import, also. That's right. Oh, now, Mikey, yeah. This, this is the second America, door where baby. It opens up to the storage unit that we showed earlier. We made it. Above that is your secondary slide out. Overall, I love the exterior design. The whole motorhome looks so contemporary. All right, let's see the inside. Come on. It has a young vibe to it. Let's go, Ennis. Mm -hmm. You can see the latches there, heavy duty. And I'll meet you guys inside. We'll see you inside, Ennis. Be careful. I'll take the ladder over there. Hopefully they don't fall and eat shit. straight into the living room area. Now, the interior of this motorhome is stunning. In fact, Denbell uses an interior design firm that specializes... The inside in looks kind of fucking cool. And their eye for beautiful finishes. <laughs> yes, this looks kind of cool. Really shows. And even the ceilings are covered with this exquisite material. Mood lighting throughout. Well, what and material is it? Is it adamantium? Is it plastic? Like, what the fuck are we talking about, Ennis? That way you get a nice air distribution throughout the space. Now, I want to cover this section here. This is your living room seating area. You have a built-in seating here with mood lighting underneath. And this is your first slide out, Mikey. You even have some upper cabinets here. Imagine course, crashing one of these. It's just a cozy area. For yeah, imagine if you down, crash something this expensive, it just kind of Since it's bursts into like area. actual money, like now, dollar bills fly out of it. Now, area, we also adjust it, turn it this way and have it as a dining table as well. On top of that. Oh, wow. You can oh, lower it shit. And raise it if you want. A lot of interesting features in this thing. Correct. Now, I also forgot to mention this. We have a skylight right in the center, bringing in the natural light in space. They have built-in blackout shades also as well. Amazing space. Now let's continue our tour. We have these two chairs currently turned this direction to your seating area. And obviously- when Damn, you're this, cruising, they've got like the rumble the pack on them. But more Look at the hydraulic the system on those bad boys. I'm gonna lower it a tiny bit. There you go. Normally you would have these chairs leaning back so you can actually lower this queen size bed all the way down here and that's your additional sleeping area. Nice. That's pretty cool. So at least four people can sleep. You could crush someone with that if you yeah. wanted to. And this section is... Now, Mikey, let's check out the cockpit. Let's do it. All right. As we go in here, it's super spacious and I can oh, say... Oh, it is spacious. The cockpit of this motorhome is truly stunning. You have so much space here and visibility is great. I'm currently sitting in the driver's seat and my dashboard here with two built-in screens. It looks like I'm driving a really nice Mercedes SUV. Visibility is great. I don't know. It's like, I'm so impressed with this uh, motorhome. Yeah. Not I wish there was one video where Ennis just goes into it and he's like, oh my God, area. this and thing right sucks. It's a piece of set. shit. We have the kitchen. I hate this. Super this is made of Corian. It sucks. There's a vibranium sink. Trash. And right here we have the melee induction cooktop. 
Above that you have your tucked in kitchen vent and here we have a nice LED channel lighting for the entire kitchen. Down below the induction cooktop we have a melee oven and ready? Dishwasher <gasps> drawer. Woo! I feel like that's not common to see. You said that in the last yeah. one, Mikey. You, you said like that literally ready? one video ago. Yeah. Made by Dumbbell. Now let's check out more cabinets. Down below the sink, we <laughs> have additional cabinetry here. Don't Everything care. Nicely compartmentalized. And they even utilize space. Does it have an automated defense system? Trade. We're back at the entry now. This is your main door. And right next to that, we have an additional door opening up the small closet space where you have your control for your AC generator. Wow. And this screen right here controls the entire motorhome. You can use it for your slide outs, awning system, doors, exteriors. You can control anything from here. First door on my right hand side goes into your bathroom. Yep, I now see the shitter. Rest of the motor home, this bathroom here Very has some of those yacht cramped. finishes with the curved walls, LED lit mirror, chrome details here with your faucet, nice bowl sink. This toilet right here, Mikey, is also heated. It's good day. Good day. This is incredible. You have it. Illegal okay, I'm out. No bidet. Makeup when you get ready mm -hmm. is your walk in shower with a massive rain head. No above. stars? Even your shower head is actually. No stars thing. on the ceiling. Yeah, Are you kidding me? Small in there either. Go, go inside. Is this a joke? Behind that, we have the grill for the radiator nicely hidden. This and wasn't nearly as futuristic as I yeah, thought really it nice. would be. You mentioned it was, uh, looked like a yacht, but it reminds me of Bentador, a Tankawa yacht we put on the channel a while back. Exactly. Um, Thanks for your Jack. Italian yachts, but if you haven't seen it, go check out that video. Make sure to check it out. Damn, it drives so smooth. It's so like it's not even moving. For a ride, and I gotta say, it drove so smoothly. Clickbaited, wasn't futuristic. It's Didn't even see any kind of hollow programs or anything.